By and large, the biggest difference between holes and waves are the retentive qualities. And this reason alone is why most folks choose to stick to waves for so long. However, in our previous episode, we discussed the benefits of learning in holes, at the very least, at the same time as we learn in waves. Ultimately, we want to achieve some balance in our paddling and stray away from an avoidance mentality. That being said, easily the most exhilarating playboating sensation comes to you when you start surfing on dynamic waves, yet equally as frustrating too. There is nothing easy about wave surfing as it requires a great deal of quick precision to actually get you to the point of being in control, let alone executing tricks on a consistent basis. But for some folks, the simple act of front surfing is simply enough. Why all this emphasis on moving around with precision on features? Because tricks are typically thrown using the upstream acceleration that the features provide from top to bottom. Regardless of what your motivation is, this episode will get you thinking about moving around effectively on waves and how it relates to our earlier lesson of moving around in holes. The reason why holes are typically more retentive than waves is due to the direction of its recirculation. Holes deal with a recirculation that has depth, whereas some waves range from little to no recirculation, all the way to big frothing monsters that look a lot like holes. In holes, we use the displacement of our volume as much as we use the actual lines on the hull of the kayak. In fact, when side surfing in a hydraulic, you are only using a small portion of the hull at all. When surfing a hole, we are surfing more on the seam, or the area where the green water meets the foam pile. Whereas on a wave, we are now skipping, planing, and carving on the faster green water. A wave can be broken down into the peak, sometimes with a foam pile, the corners or shoulders, and the trough or bottom of the wave. The peak is generally in the center, but unlike holes, doesn't necessarily have a foam pile, although many do. The foam pile recirculates in a similar fashion to a hydraulic, but there isn't much depth to it, and it is caused by gravity compared to compression. Monster waves can appear to be giant holes, but use these concepts above to differentiate between the two. The corners or shoulders are where the wave starts to fade away and become flatter, although sometimes very steep shoulders can form which are absolutely incredible for launching aerial tricks off of. So as we can see, there are some similarities between holes and waves. A great wave to start on does not have to be a monster, in fact just the opposite. A small 1-2 to two foot wave with well-defined shoulders and a small foam pile works perfect as it will generally be a speed that a novice can handle, but dynamic and retentive enough to learn all the basics. Unlike a hole, we don't have the retentive qualities to hold the boat onto the wave. Instead, we need to take advantage of gravity in minimizing our downstream movement. It is much easier to point the boat upstream, and it is actually harder to establish and maintain a side surf, unless there is a fairly substantial foam pile to turn the boat relative to the shape. You will come to find that the hardest part of surfing a wave is staying on the wave to begin with. Catching a wave won't be much different in terms of catching a hole in that you want to minimize your downstream momentum, but even more so as you don't have the retentive qualities of the hole. You can ferry onto the shoulder of the wave to establish your surf or you can drop in from upstream, although this time you can keep the boat pointed upstream to help maintain some speed to catch the wave. If the wave has a fairly substantial foam pile, you can drop into it sideways and time a forward stroke on your downstream side at the same time you make contact with the foam pile. A common mistake made when catching waves is to keep the hull flat relative to the water, which will cause the boat to purl when it is picked up and catches the wave. Purling a boat means to dive either the bow or the stern under the water. We purl our boats while surfing in holes to get rejected from the water to execute aerial acrobatics. On a wave, however, we are trying to skip or carve on the surface, not plug into the water for aerial tricks. So while surfing a wave, it is less desirable to purl the kayak. It was common belief that purling occurred because of the length and rocker of the kayak alone. And although the length and the rocker do have an effect on how easy it is to purl, it is not alone at the core of what prevents our boats from purling. A little physics lesson. A boat can surf a wave in a front surf position in two fashions. It can surf it with the stern high or low, and this affects the pitch of the kayak. If the stern is low, the boat is pitched backward, the boat is decelerating, and you're less likely to purl the bow. If the stern is high on the foam pile, or the peak, the boat is pitched forward, and the boat is accelerating, and if the hull is kept flat, you will no doubt experience the porpoising effect. 
Typically, folks will compensate and try to control the pitch by leaning forward or backward radically, more often backward, but this has a minimal effect on the pitch, and we find that they are still purling their kayaks. Not to mention, they are also taking their bodies away from the center point, our most effective position of power. Furthermore, the boat accelerates best when the waterline is lengthened, and this occurs when the boat is pitched forward. When you start to really focus on moving around and initiating tricks, you will remain extremely focused on what the pitch of the kayak is doing. So far, we have been very focused on the effect that pitch has had on the boat's ability to purl and accelerate, but we have left out an important axis of motion that not only helps us prevent purling, but also helps us move from side to side on a wave as well. This is the act of carving and occurs through the roll axis. Going back to our earlier lesson of holding edge, it is once again important to emphasize the need to have the power in balance to hold an edge without use of the paddle. This should be a bit easier at first. When you first start to learn to carve as the amount of edge you give is minimal. But when it comes time for radical carving and edge to edge transitions for tricks, it's crucial. A good drill to practice to get used to the sensation of carving on a wave is to ferry onto a wave and carve your way across the entire face. The first thing you will notice is that this will be an extremely dynamic maneuver and will result in an accelerated downstream turn, also known as a jet ferry. But when we desire to stay on the wave, we have to apply a break before we carve right off the other side of the wave. Just like gaining control and moving around in a hole, we need to utilize the paddle. And in this case, we will use the paddle as a directional break called a rudder. The rudder occurs on the side opposite of the edge that is carving and will feel incredibly alien at first. But if you trust it and remember a few key factors, you will learn the most dynamic control you have felt in a kayak aside from the act of carving itself. It is important to remember to keep the paddle engaged in the foam pile. If you start to move your paddle blade up into the green water, you start to gamble with instability. As your boat starts to turn with the carve, the more you have to twist your body to keep the blade active in the foam pile. You might begin to think that it's easier to control the direction and the carving stability through forward strokes, but there is a folly in this perception for a couple of reasons. This will accelerate you constantly and only keep you in the trough of the wave, which is problematic as tricks are thrown accelerating from the top of the feature to the bottom. And simply put, it's weaker. The forward stroke is excellent, however, when you need the additional acceleration or in conjunction with the rudder to help accelerate and initiate a new direction. You can also use a single blade as opposed to both blades and switch between a rudder and a stern draw to control the carving acceleration. Spinning and side surfing can be the most aggravating concept to get down on a wave, in comparison to a hole because you don't have its retentive qualities, and in addition, your edges are constantly interacting with the green water of the wave. A term that gets thrown around a lot with very little understanding is looseness. And a boat's looseness affects its ability to side surf and spin easily on a wave. Looseness, literally, is the boat's ability to break free from the edge's grasp on the wave, or the boat's ability to have no edge interaction on a wave. There is an inverse relationship between a boat's ability to carve and be loose, although there are a lot of innovations in design that allow both to coexist in high-performance fashion. In order for a boat to break loose, though, you need to think of the best way to minimize edge interaction. Keeping the boat flat does this. As soon as the boat is rolled up onto edge, the edge interacts with the green water and carves instead. A small amount of edge can be overcome, but it's best to try to learn to keep the boat flat and by learning to break the boat free into a side surf. In order to do this, first, it is important to have the boat accelerating simultaneously as it will be planning to a higher level than if the boat were decelerating. By getting to the top of the wave by carving to the shoulder, then carving back to the middle, we initiate the downward acceleration. And at the moment of peak acceleration, we initiate a well-timed back sweep while keeping the boat flat breaking the boat free into a side surf. By keeping the paddle blade active, we can maintain the side surf by keeping the boat flat and sideways relative to the feature. To continue into a spin instead, we continue to take the back sweep until the boat is backwards. And much like the corner spin in the hole, as the boat points downstream, our head rotates back around to the spot where we are going. It is also that moment when we switch the active blade, 
but this time trying to minimize the edge and keep the boat flat so as not to carve off of the wave instead. Wave takes a much greater amount of finesse than the hole. We're sometimes in a hole, we have to have the won't take no attitude and give it some extra push. So, in quick review, a contrast of basic maneuvers in holes versus waves. 